It might be something like, welcome to invested success, something like that. But it could also be like, welcome to invested success. I couldn't have said it better myself. As you might have guessed, today's guest is Carrie Olson, voiceover actor and voiceover coach. Self-proclaimed introvert Carrie Olson might say she's not a big talker, but her career choice has proven otherwise. You might recognize her voice from big name brand commercials like REI and Grammarly, or from television and entertainment such as HBO Max, DreamWorks, Home Chef, and Netflix. She's even done voice for Lady Gaga, which we talk about in today's episode. But that wasn't always the path that Carrie was on. Her first career was as an e-learning content designer. But as soon as she was bitten by the theater bug and discovered her passion for voiceover, she was hooked. And if you thought that actors have to starve, today's episode will prove you wrong. Not only did Carrie Olsen match her corporate career in the first year she ventured out as a voiceover actor, she now has surpassed her corporate salary pursuing this passion and dream. So it's a really inspiring tale. And we dive into how you can not only hone your voice craft, but build a business and personal brand around things like voiceover and acting. Carrie is also a voice in the financial independence community. She co-wrote a book with her husband about money and marriage, and we talk about their financial journey, taking a trailer across the country with a one-year-old, and it's just an honor to have her on the show. Before we get started, I just want to say a huge thank you. Without you, the listener, this show would be nothing. I have been blown away and completely thrilled with the surprising and explosive growth of this show, and I love hearing from you every week. I love getting your DMs and your emails raving about how much you love guests. Um, It just means the world to me and reading your reviews is making my day. So thank you so much for tuning in week after week and listening. Uh, The show really wouldn't be anything without you and we just want to give you more of the content that you are loving. So thank you for tuning in. It's truly an honor. I hope that this content on Invested Success has helped you Find your passion, pursue your passion, and double down so that you are uh, reaching your fullest potential because that's, I think, what we're all aspiring to do as humans. By the way, quick announcement. This is the grand finale of season one of Invested Success. We are relaunching next year with a whole brand new format and angle that I'm really excited about, but you play a really important factor in this next season. I want to know any guest requests, what you liked, what you want more of, what you would change, and so that's why we have included a feedback form that you can submit. So just check out the show notes on iTunes, YouTube, or wherever you're watching and listening, and click on the feedback form to let us know how we can make season two more of what you want and you'll be entered to win a $50 gift card. So it's a win-win. I can't wait to read what you have to say. Thank you so much for participating and contributing your thoughts and ideas so that we can bring them to life for you. Now that that's out of the way, please help me welcome Carrie Olson, voiceover coach and voiceover actor. Welcome, Carrie. Welcome to today's episode of Invested Success. I'm here today with Carrie Olson. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you. Glad to be here. Do you have anything you want to kind of add to how you get started and where your journey began with voice acting? Was that like what you always wanted to do? Yeah, that was not always what I wanted to do. Um, I often talk about it like I, I'm probably the last person that any of my friends, you know, growing up would have expected to do any type of like performance type job. I was very quiet. And even my job right before getting into voiceover was behind the scenes. So I was a e-learning designer. And occasionally because of that job and the way that the industry works, I got to narrate some of my own courses um, which is, it's funny now being on this side of it, because that's something I always advise e-learning uh, developers not to do. It's like, you should probably hire somebody who's a professional to do that. Um, but yeah, so it's not something I wanted to do. It wasn't on my radar. And it was actually through, I love doing podcast interviews because that's how I learned about voiceover was through a podcast interview. My now voiceover coach and good friend, Allison Steele, was being interviewed on a podcast. And I 
heard the podcast on my way to work, commuting to my my you know computer job, office job. And uh, something clicked and I thought, wow, that sounds like something that I could do. And without having any acting, you know, background or anything really other than having heard her talk about it, I uh, bought a coaching session from her. Um, soon after that, started auditioning. Soon after that, started booking work, fell in love with this industry and with the work and uh, really found my uh, my place, you know, as far as the type of work that I liked doing and was booking and got a great agent and, and yeah, I've just been, um, loving being in this, the voiceover field ever since. Very cool. What made you fall in love with it? Cause I know it's, it sounds very glamorous, but it also sounds like it could be, you know, intimidating and stressful potentially. So what it was like the good and the bad of, of being a voiceover actor? Yeah, so it's so interesting that you say it sounds glamorous because there is definitely a glamorous side to it. And I, you know, sometimes uh, when people ask me, you know, where would I have heard you? I'll, I'll definitely throw out my more glamorous stuff that I've done. But there's also plenty of like stuff I've done that is, uh, you know, phone tree. You know, thank you for calling and such push one to talk to customer service it's like that's not glamorous um but it pays the bills and it's 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 still you know fun you know voiceover work so it's not all glamorous by any means uh, i would say the majority's not you know there's there are a few people who are booking the really fun i won't say a few there are a lot of people who are booking really fun um you know high profile stuff and then there are just tons who are doing your everyday you know explainer videos and just cranking out uh work um, but what made me fall in love with it was uh, I, like I mentioned, I was, you know, I'm still am an introvert, I'm a fairly quiet person. And this booth was just this amazing safe place where I could all of a sudden like come out of my shell and be expressive and be myself. And there was no one to judge me. You know, no one's looking at me. I mean, right now, obviously we're on video, but most of the time when I'm doing voiceover work, it's just me in here and I can be as wacky and you know as I want to and uh and you know obviously if the script calls for it and uh I really it was therapeutic you know my um my coaching sessions were therapeutic I learned more about myself and became a more confident person um because you did mention also that it can be intimidating and that's very true so there's a lot of this work that requires you as a voice actor to be confident and not let what you think um, your client wants or what the directors are thinking about you. You can't let that affect you. You know, I have to go into every session knowing that I'm there to do a good job and that I'm on the same team as the people who are directing me. And we're going to work together to get this thing done. And they hired me because they have faith in my ability. And uh, so, you know, with each take, you know, and sometimes there are a lot of takes and sometimes it's it's more difficult than others to land on exactly what we all want, you know, what, what, but throughout the whole thing, you know, you have like choice. You can let that, uh, let that get to you and start to doubt yourself and think and get self-conscious. Or you can say, that's no big deal. We're, we're working together. We'll land on it eventually. And I'm going to keep listening and, and giving what I can do because I, I, I have the ability to do it. Um, so yeah, a lot of growth and a lot of just really fun work. So every day is different. There is a lot to love about it. How did you get your first gig? What, and I'd love to hear also some of your, like, feel free to brag about your favorite juiciest roles that you've been able to dig into. So my first job was through an online casting site. And since then there are now just so, so many online casting sites. And I have a, I know you took one of my courses. I have a free guide where I talk about um, kind of how to get started and what the different online casting sites are, but it's just what it sounds like. It's, um, you know, you pay a subscription fee to get access to companies that are, that have posted jobs and then you audition. And sometimes you're auditioning against hundreds of people. And uh, so it's, it's competitive, but that's how I booked my first job. And that was really the eye-opening job as to, oh my gosh, this is something that not just I enjoy and that's fun that I can be, you know, can be a hobby, but this can actually make money. And, um, and then soon after that, I booked a national radio campaign with REI and I worked with REI for years after that. And so that was uh, incredible, you know, because when you can get that ongoing work where you don't have to audition every time, but they're just you know, it's a campaign where it's your deal. That's an incredible type of work to get. 
as far as like my my favorite work, um, I love doing voice matching. So I have voice matched for Aquafina, for um, let's see, like Selena Gomez, uh, Margot Robbie. Um, there, there are some like Tessa Thompson. So different people that I get to you know come and just do voice matching stuff. That's always fun. Oh, most recently, um, Lady Gaga, <laughs> um, not her singing, but um, speaking. <laughs> And uh, the new Ron's Gone Wrong movie, I, I did the trailer for that. Okay, technically, what is voice matching? Please, just for our audience at home that may not know. Yeah, if there's a reason it might be, there might be that uh, the, the celebrity or whoever that was filming that day, uh, they might have changed the dialogue, or maybe there was a problem with the dialogue, or it was too windy, um, and they need, you know, just a few lines or a word or, or something like that, or yeah, or maybe it's a trailer and they haven't figured out what they want the person to say yet. So um, so you would go and just say whatever the lines were and try to sound as much like the other person as possible and uh, it gets used instead of what was originally recorded or if there was something originally recorded. And it's always funny when I talk, when I tell people, because I've had people say, well, I listened for you and I didn't hear you. And I was like, well, that's a good thing because I wasn't supposed to sound like me. I was trying to sound like somebody else. So um, it's one of those, it, you know, it's fun to say, but again, it's it's not glamorous. Like I'm not the one, you know, I'm, I'm sounding like somebody else, but it's so much fun to do. Those are really fun jobs to get. I think it sounds really cool. And I mean, it's so, so very different from like a lot of those kind of corporate day jobs, which it sounds like you were in. Was it scary making the leap? Did you slowly kind of go through that transition in your career? And um, have you found that you were able to kind of like match your previous salary or surpass it from a financial perspective? Was, was that, um, did you like have to make a financial sacrifice for your passion? Or were you able to thrive and excel in, in both finances and this exciting new career? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so first starting out, was it scary? I think I was so excited that it wasn't as scary as it should have been. Um, it was probably more scary for my husband just because he's more financially conservative than I am. I'm more likely to say, hey, what do we got to lose? You know, what's the worst that could happen? Let's try it. Not in an irresponsible way, but, you, you know, always have it. Like it was, um, it was a well thought out and calculated decision. Um, but wasn't, I wasn't as worried. And I did also, I stayed on as a consultant at my day job for probably just a couple months. But at that, it only took a couple months for me to be like, well, nope, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on, on voiceover exclusively. Um, and then as far as taking a cut, I would say the first year I probably about matched what I was doing uh, previously, but it was hard. I was working a lot. I was auditioning constantly. I mean, that was my job. I wake up and audition and then audition more and then keep auditioning. So um, I was auditioning, uh, you know, that was my job the whole year of doing voiceover full time. And then after that, I started thinking about other ways that I could be using my time in voiceover and really started marketing and pushing the, um, just doing outreach. And that was huge. And I have clients, you know, from that push years and years ago that I still work with to this day. And um, so that's when I started kind of having a mix of what I do as far as how to get work. And of course, the more work you do, the more contacts you make, and then you get more uh, relationships. So you uh, increase your chances of someone just emailing you one day and saying, I've got this job for you. Can you do it for me? So, um, you know, the more contacts you can have, the more uh, relationships that you can make, it just makes that, uh, you know, that engine turn and, and um, you know, work for you a lot more efficiently. And, and yes, now I have well surpassed my previous income. Oh, congratulations. That's really exciting. Thank you. I love that taking a gamble on your passion and purpose paid off. That's always great. I would say now, what are some recommendations you would give to somebody looking to potentially break into this field? And are, is there anything? Yeah, thanks for acknowledging that because I think that married with what you said earlier about it sounding glamorous. And, and I know my story too is, uh, is you know, such a fairy tale story, you know, and not everybody's is that way. And so the way that I, the advice I give or the, the, uh, I guess, information that I want people to have before they come into it is uh, to have the pro, uh, proper expectations and to know that it is a job, it is work. 
So, uh, you know, I've talked to so many people who want to do the fun part, but not have the grind, the grind work that goes with it. And um, I don't know how that works. Like if you can figure out how to do the fun part without doing the, you know, the hard work, let me know, but I don't know what that is. So there is the administrative piece behind it. So to be a voice actor, you are the marketing person. You are your, you know, unless you hire someone out, you know, your branding, web design, um, you're doing uh, administrative work, you're invoicing, you're making contacts, you're managing your, your, um, your CRM. So there's a lot that goes into being a voiceover talent, especially nowadays. It's, it's so much more, uh, you know, you're, you're a one-stop shop. And so you're handling, you're wearing a lot of different hats. And so if you don't want to do that, then you're going to be disappointed or there's just going to be a part of your business that suffers. You're not going to book a lot of work. So I think you, and you have to have a passion for the acting part because that's, what's going to carry you through those other things. It's going to make, wake you up and help you to be excited to go and send out however many emails that day so that you can be making contacts. Um, because if you want to do the voiceover work, this is like the prerequisite stuff you have to do. Um, and then on top of that, speaking of prerequisites is I think you have to get training. And I think that's a part too, that a lot of people are unaware of. And so I like that you even said initially, oh, I took a course. I think a lot of people's attitude is, what do I need to take a course for to do voiceover? It's just talking. And I talk all the time. I've been talking for decades. Like, why do I need to study that? Um, but it is, it is competitive and it's a very specific type of, it's a very specific skill set. And so if you, you know, can talk and you can read, that's great. That's a start. Um, but, you know, learning how to analyze different types of reads and different scripts and, um, you know, do that self, that interpretation and self-direction is necessary. You have to be able to do that. And, and it's fun, too. I mentioned how it was like therapeutic. And if you really like that, then it's going to feed you, you know, and, and you're going to leave your first coaching session with your brain about to explode because there's so much more, you know, than, than what you realized, but hopefully it also leaves you wanting more and going, well, that was really interesting. I can't wait to learn more. And you just have to be patient because you can't rush that skill development process. Um, so enjoy it. Just enjoy that process of learning the craft like you would with any other thing. You know, you're not going to learn to be a whatever overnight. So uh, just enjoy the process. Such excellent advice that can translate to any field, I would say. Uh, I'm sure, especially this yes. one. Do you do you teach? Do you coach voice actors on the craft as well as like how to start themselves in that career? I do, and uh, that's something that I've done off and on my whole career. So I have you know whole periods of time where I just don't, you know, I, I don't take on students, and I'm not doing that. So. I'm not sure when this episode is going to air, but um, currently, um, yes, I do have some openings. So um, I, I always have my online courses that are available. And then um, every once in a while, I'll take on one-on-one -on -one students as well. So as a voiceover actor, do you have any personas or personalities that you tap into and like get hired for regularly? A lot of times it's just me, you know, or, or like a really close variation. I get hired just to, to talk, which is really nice. A lot of commercials, it's just kind of a heightened version of myself. And like my coach calls it just like heightened reality. So it's like, I'm probably not going to talk about it with this much enthusiasm if I was just talking to you, but wait until you, you know, and then it kind of just gets a little bit. Uh, more heightened. If you want to, I would love to hear you say something in your like heightened voice before we log off and like no pressure, but let me know if you'd be up for that. I'd love to hear it. You could say like, welcome to invested success, oh. which is. Uh, I'm trying to even think of like what the music would be behind this. Cause depending, it might be something like welcome to invested success, something like that, but it could also be like, welcome to invested success. Something down there. Amazing. Both of those are incredible. I think, um, I think the second one would be definitely my pick, but yeah, we'll have to put okay. that at the, at the intro, but, and I'll pay you, I'll bill <laughs> nice. me later, bill me later for the, oh, the right. excellent work. <laughs> You know, one of the reasons I, I'm aware of you is from the financial independence community and you and your husband wrote a book. Is that right? Do you want to talk a little bit about what that's yes. about? 
Yeah, the the financial, um, like personal finance community, we're, we've been so close with that community for so long. And the story is when my husband and I first got married, I brought a house into our marriage that was in danger of being foreclosed on. So I had um, bought a house when I was 21. I had a job at an energy company. Uh, and then two things simultaneously happened. One is I started renting out the house. And then I got laid off from my job. And my renters... Um, trashed the house. And so it was more than what I could do to repair it. I mean, it was, it was bad. And then last my a fifth of my company got laid off and I was one of the fifth. So, um, so all of that is happening while I'm like meeting and like falling in love with my husband. And, and so then, uh, we get married and, and he knew about it, by the way, I didn't like spring this on him after we got married. Um, so we get married and we end up doing a short sale on the house. But through our first year of marriage, we had so many conversations about money and, you know, just uh, the, the conversations became much more about money because we had to have these talks. And so we realized soon that as we're talking about money, we're actually talking about like our values and how we grew up and how we were different, how we were the same. And we felt like we grew so much in that first year because of these money conversations. So we, to answer your question, we wrote a book called Better Conversations on Money and Marriage. And uh, we talk about our experience and the things that we learned and what we kind of, um, some things that we suggest to a people who, um, sorry, our podcast was called Better Conversations on Money and Marriage. The book was called One Bed, One Bank Account. There you go. So um, yeah, um, that's, that's how we got into into that space, and uh, and, and just so happened to to start you know my voiceover business, and so a lot of people in that personal finance industry were interested in in this also because it's a, a you know entrepreneurial endeavor, um, so that's kind of our our double connection with the personal finance community. Oh, that is so cool. I mean, I agree with you. I, I think a lot of couples are afraid to talk about money. I personally find it so liberating uh, because it is a way to kind of connect to discover the person and, you know, their behavior and values in a different way. Is that kind of what the book is about? I'd love to hear kind of just a quick synopsis if you want to share. It's interesting that you say like you, you think it's, it's good to talk about uh, finances because it is one of the most vulnerable things that you can talk about, you know, so it's hard, but that is one of the reasons why it's so helpful and why it's so fruitful, uh, because you do have to kind of like bury yourself. And um, that is, you know, we believe that that transparency in a marriage is really important. And uh, and also, if you can get past talking about a lot of these really vulnerable, um, you know, money things, that's a great kind of gateway. It, it makes everything else kind of easier because you've already done this hard work. So we talk about how like we did like 10 years worth of conversations in that first year, which we don't necessarily recommend, but it, it was helpful. Um, so the book, yeah, it talks about that story and then also goes into some practical things that, uh, you know, for when you're having conversations, like hard conversations, what you can do, which a lot of those things were things we learned from experience or things that we learned through, you know, like our premarital counseling or, you know, talking to other wise people. Um, but one of the main things was making sure, like remembering that we're on the same team. So that was one thing that uh, anytime we were having a conversation and we felt like we were kind of getting at odds. And it's so funny because I say that now to our, my, our kids. So we have a almost five-year-old and a seven-year-old. And, you know, when I'm trying to get them to do something and they're kind of, you know, wanting to go against that, it's like, hey, remember, we're on the same team. You know, we are all, I, I want what's best for you and you want what's best for you. Let's, you know, we're, we're doing this together. And so with marriage, same thing. Like we're, instead of we're at each other, like we're on the same side against the world or against this problem or whatever it is and trying to, to stay united. Goosebumps. I'm so on board with that. I love that. <laughs> and did you, is it true that you, where are you now? And did you take a trailer around the, the country as like a solution to this problem or feel free to elaborate on that a little bit? I'd love to know more. Sure. So I'm in um, not a very exotic place right now. I'm in Kansas city. And, uh, but yes, when um, let's see a few years after we got married, when my older daughter was one, we sold half of our possessions and bought a travel trailer and uh, drove around the country. And um, yeah, it was fantastic. It was like part book tour, 
part adventure. At the time, my husband was really into this podcast called the Family Adventure Podcast. And it's about, it's so inspiring because it's about not just like retired people or young people, but families who decide to travel full time. So whether that's in a travel trailer or like a converted bus or on a sailboat, you know, um, people who just decide to travel for the adventure of it. And part of the um, one of the things or the themes that was that, you know, went through that the stories in that podcast a lot were um, the person who decided to travel with their family said, well, my dad or my mom, or they, I always wanted to travel. And they always said that they would do it once they retired. And then it was too late or they, you know, were too sick or, you know, something happened, they waited too long. And so that was the inspiration for these young families to decide, hey, we're doing it now. And I think that was, it really lit a fire under my husband. And he was like, why, why would we not try this? So um, we did a book tour and uh, just kind of had an adventure around the U.S. We were living in our travel trailer for about nine months. So seven of that, seven of those months, we were on the road. And then uh, two months, we came back to Kansas City and before we found another place to, to set up. That is so cool. And you did that with a one-year-old. Is that right? Yes. yes Amazing. The day <laughs> after her first birthday. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's a great story. Cause so many people are always saying they can't travel because they have kids. So I love that you, uh, that you did it. Do you have any tips for somebody that's maybe looking to embark upon like a year of travel, um, anywhere in the States or maybe across the world? Yeah, there are so many, so many resources now. And there's some really great like Facebook groups and communities where you can, uh, you know, connect with other people who are doing it. So there's no shortage um, of information you can get. We used, I don't even know if it's around anymore, but we used this site called roadtripper.com to map out where we would go. Uh, one of my favorite tips is um, if you're in a travel trailer, there's a site called boondockerswelcome.com. And so when we first started, we were paying to stay at uh, like RV parks. Uh, every time that we, you know, every time we needed to sleep. And so that gets expensive. And, you know, if that's part of your budget, that's fine. But Boondockers Welcome, at least when we did it, it was like a $25 a year thing. And then you get access to this network of these people who are either traveling or are open to having people stay at their place. And so we met so many amazing people. Uh, one couple in Seattle like took us out on their sailboat and they're all like traveling people. So it's people with like the same kind of, you know, um, adventurous spirit. And so you meet a bunch of really neat people uh, through that site. So that's pro that was our biggest like money saving and uh, just neat way to meet people uh, while on the road. So boondockers welcome. Great tip. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, my husband and I are completely travel obsessed. So we kind of did a van cross country thing this year. Uh, we're going to do like Europe and Thailand next year, pandemic permitting. We'll see what happens, but, yes. uh, yeah, we're really excited about it. And I, I love meeting those other travel people on the road who are wild and crazy and adventurous, uh, like we are. Do you have any gear tips? I'm really liking for those of you who aren't, you know, who are listening on podcasts, your setup is this like something that you've done in your home? Do you have a home studio or is this like a cool closet that you've set aside for this purpose? <laughs> so this is, this is my home studio. Uh, the way that I have it set up right now is I have, it's a um, vocalbooth.com, vocal booth. You can just go to vocalbooth.com and I, I don't want to, I was going to say it's overkill for a podcast, but not necessarily, you know, uh, I think it depends on your space. I will say, and this is hopefully goes without saying, but I've heard some podcasts that would indicate that maybe it doesn't. Um, your sound is really, really important. Do take some time to figure out your equipment. The good thing is it is a lot less expensive these days to get decent equipment that's going to you know, make you sound nice. Um, but don't ignore your environment either because you know, I mean, for me, I have to be careful of if the air conditioner kicks on. If I didn't have like a, an isolation booth, those would be things that would be concerning to me, right? So like if the neighbor starts mowing the lawn, um, little things like that that can really affect your sound. And when all you have is sound, you know, if it's a podcast, I mean, I've stopped listening to podcasts because I, I'm like, this content is great, but I, I can't listen to this anymore, especially if it's like an hour long thing, you know, it's, it's really important. So don't, don't underestimate how important that is. 
um, you know, invest in some good equipment and then make sure you learn how to use it. And, you know, your mic technique's important if you're too close to your microphone, if you're too far away from it. So learn that. Um, and then, you know, make sure that your space, it doesn't have to be a whole booth, but make sure that you, uh, you maybe you can even think about the time of day that you're recording. When is your street most quiet? I really liked those tips because I think those go well with voice acting, right? You have to have your own booth, your own setup. What about in terms of controlling your voice warming up? Uh, do you have any like practical tips and, t- and tricks to sort of prepare yourself when you're auditioning or uh, filming? Yeah. So um, I'll say the the most important thing is the most basic and like the least glamorous is drink a lot of water, you know, make sure you're hydrated. So that's really important for, I mean, for your body in general, but, you know, for your voice too, um, making sure that you're hydrated and then just know your body because uh, if you overhydrate, that can cause issues. If you underhydrate, that'll definitely cause issues. Um, and it can be everything from, you know, your voice not having as much uh, like endurance, you know, and actually just like losing your voice um, to just like smacks and clicks, which that's another thing with podcasting. I mean, voiceover definitely, but podcasting too. If you have a noisy mouth, that really, that can really affect the, the way that your listeners are engaging. So um and, and be distracting. So water, learning what your your right uh, you know quantity of water is, so that you're not under or overhydrated uh, to avoid you know mouth clicks and things like that. So that's really important. And then you know there are little things like warm ups that you can do. My favorite is just to put a pencil in my mouth and and then you know say my script with the pencil lengthwise in my mouth and just you try to like <laughs> enunciate as much as possible. And then when you take it out, you know, it's kind of like running with a parachute on your back and then you take it off and you can run a lot faster. So uh, that's one of my favorite kind of warm up tips. That's a great one. And were you, I mean, you just obviously have an incredible voice. Were you kind of born with that or did you have to hone in like your breathing, et cetera? Is there any trick to just be born with an amazing voice like you are? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so thank you, by the way, I, um, I never thought I had an amazing voice. I have like maybe a couple friends who over the years have been like, a really, you know, nice or soothing voice, but honestly, I didn't hear it a lot. There are people who hear that a way lot, you know, way more than I do. Um, but I, I really do think though, that it's more the performance than it is my voice. And I, I mean, it's a, com- it's definitely a combination because there are some people with voice, but, you know, just don't have the the it factor or whatever it is, you know, that, uh, you have to be able to engage and, um, you know, it is acting. So the, one of the first things that most voiceover coaches will teach you is they'll ask you the question, who are you talking to? So when you get a script and you're reading about McDonald's or whatever, maybe you have the greatest voice and this, it sounds beautiful, but there's no connection because you're not talking to a person. So there really is that imaginative part of it. And it goes back to even what I said earlier about like being, uh, being open in your booth. So when I'm in here and I'm talking to somebody, I'm not worried about what anyone else is thinking. I'm talking to, you know, my best friend or whatever, and, and really engaging. And so, you know, who knows what the percentage is as far as, uh, what percentage is voice and what percentage is just being able to relate and engage. But I feel like it's more of the engage thing. And I think that's a good thing because that's something that can be learned. You know, that's part of the skill set. Like you, your voice is your voice. Um, you can, uh, you know, if you have really nasally voice, like there are things you can do to, to, um, you know, have more, um, you know, kind of command of, of your voice. Um, but for the most part, your voice is your voice, but you can learn to act. And you can learn, you know, kind of those other skills. I just really relate to the fact that you're an introvert. I'm also thrilled, but also surprised to hear that you are able to come alive sort of on your own. What are some tips that you would give to maybe either introverts who are looking to come out of their shell or get into this kind of business and just release that self-doubt so that they can have fun and, and, and enjoy themselves and maybe get into this type of career? Well, the first thing that came to mind was when my husband and I first started podcasting together, we had this box that we drew a face on and we called it Box A Million and we like set it down. And so when we were talking, we would like 
talk to Box a Million. Um, so especially if you're solo podcasting or something, it can be helpful just to have someone, someone uh, to talk to. Um, and then, you know, you, you said like how they can enjoy themselves. That is, I mean, that's got to be the key. I'm sure I could think of like a lot of keys, but that's a huge key is like, don't over judge yourself. Don't uh, go into the booth thinking about, well, okay, how can I read this exactly so that it's what the client wants? Because then you're in your head and that's like the exact opposite of the place you need to be. You need to be having fun. And that's why, um, you know, one of the exercises that my coach um, taught me and, and other coaches uh, advocate for is uh, doing something totally wacky, right? So maybe you're doing a read and you feel kind of stuck and I don't know where to go with this. It's not connecting. Just, you know, read it in a really bad hackney accent for a moment, you know, just be really, you know, whatever, and and do something that's totally outside the box. And, and it gets you out of your head. It breaks that seal of like, oh, I'm an adult. I have to be put together and I can't be silly. It's like, no, be silly. And then come back to your read, you know? So it's that, it's a really weird um, thing where it's like, well, it's a job. So my ability to make money depends on me doing this well. But my ability to do this well may, means that I can't be focusing on the money and I can't be focusing on pleasing someone else. So I have to have fun in order to get the job, in order to make money. So it starts with getting outside your head and, and having fun, you know, which, which is hard to do, if, especially if you're just getting started and you're like, I just spent $500 on a site. I just spent $500 on a coach. I need some, you know, I need to earn some money, but Again, like if you're focusing there, your read is necessarily going to be inhibited and restricted because you're focused on these external things that are stressful versus getting into your booth and having fun. Oh my gosh, that is profound. I wish someone had told me that to me like 30 years ago. I would have, I was a voice actor as a kid too. So we could talk about that. I used to get in my head all the time. Yeah, I did Barney tapes. <laughs> that was like my no claim way. to fame. Yes, yeah. I, was barely, awesome. I was a baby. I was like five or six or something, but it was really scary as a six-year-old being in a voice booth and like taking sure. corrections and stuff. So yeah, I think relaxing and having fun is the secret to performing well. So I love that, like getting out of your head, not thinking of it as a job, such great advice. And I, I have to just ask like, how many accents can you do? Did you have to do accent training? Cause that was a great hackney accent you did. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I have taken accent classes. Um, I've trained with a woman who does, uh, she, her, um, kind of tagline is the woman of a thousand voices. She did, uh, like eight characters on South park. Uh, and, and just like, does like, she's, she's a brilliant accent and dialect teacher. So I've trained with her. Um, so I have trained to do accents, but I would say like confidently I can do like a few American, like maybe Southern and, you know, some other things. Uh, and then, uh, British, basic British, um, basic British as if that's a thing, but, um, it, you know, when I need to, I can, I can do that. And then, uh, like, uh, like Hispanic, um, cause I, I speak some Spanish, so that's helpful. Um. And then I can fake, I can fake my way through something, you know, if, uh, if I have to do something, uh, that I don't necessarily feel confident doing, um, I can, you know, go listen to it and kind of fake my way through enough. Uh, I like to, um, pretend to do Russian accents with my kids. They really like it and request it sometimes. So before we sign off, um, do you want to say welcome to invested success in like a, your favorite accent, whatever you choose? Uh, let's see here. Let's do, um, Welcome to Invested Success. Excellent. Yay. And then applause. Beautiful, beautiful. So where can people find you? How can we join your course and, and get behind you and follow you? So my website is carryolsonvo.com. I'll all of that out because I think there are 36 ways to spell Carrie and two ways to spell Olson. Um, and then the VO stands for voiceover. So it's Carrie, C-A-R-R-I-E, O-L-S-E-N-V-O.com. Um, I have a Facebook group uh, called The Voiceover Startup. And uh, actually, I have a, a page where your listeners can go to download some resources if they're interested, like my getting started. So uh, carrieolsonvo.com slash invest. And they can download some resources and that will put them on my email list as well. Oh, so smart. I love it when people have free gifts. And also you can find all of this in the show notes. So, well, it was such a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having me. This has been fantastic. Absolutely. 
Carrie, thank you so much for that free gift. I can't wait to dive in. If you want to get Carrie's free gift or check out any of her other resources, go uh, to the show notes of the show. They're always available in the iTunes episode that you're listening to uh, or in the the description on YouTube. I learned so much from this episode. I'm just totally blown away by Carrie's story. It's so impressive. It shows that following your purpose and your passion, even if it's not necessarily the seemingly practical path, can pay off big time. So it was really cool to to witness that story and just see how, how talented Carrie is at voiceover. I learned a lot that I can bring to the table. I think in any career when it comes to making a brave decision and a brave move in life. Final reminder to go to the show notes, click on the feedback form and let us know what you want to see in season two so we can make it happen for you. What was your favorite part of the episode? Let me know in the comments below or leave a review on iTunes. As always, please drop us a like on YouTube and more importantly, hit the subscribe button on iTunes. This is Elise Walsh signing off with Invested Success and we will see you next season. (music) 